Hey everyone, today we're going to be going over Leak Code 169 Majority Element. Pretty much the input is going to be some numbers in an array and we want the thing which occurs the most and the most is considered anything which is greater than the length by two the floor of. Pretty much it's in the description. Anyway, I know there's a lot of ways to solve it but I'm going to show you the divide and conquer way. I'm going to actually write out the recursive tree and hopefully it's helpful and it makes you remember how to use divide and conquer. So let's get into it. Now we're going to return um, recursive AR0 which means there's going to be a I pointer there and a J pointer there which is AR dot length minus one <coughs> So, let's look at the base case. Um, public int recur int array i int j. So with recursion, let's always talk about the base case first. If i and j are the same, for example, if there's only one element, then i and j are going to be the same, and we're going to return what's in there. So, if i is equal to j return a r of i now we get into the fun stuff so the recursive map just follow me along i'll write the code later is going to look like this um, int m is going to be i of j plus two well by two and we're going to call recur the array, i is going to be 0, j is going to be 2. We're going to call left side. We want to know what is the most mm, common, most occurring element on the left and right side, right? So we're going to call it, this guy is going to call recur, a r, m is 2, because a 0 plus 2 by 2 is 1. So, oh, sorry, m is going to be 1, yeah. All right, and he's going to call recur a, r, 0, and 1. This guy is going to call recur a, r of 0 and 0. And he's also going to call recur a, r of 1, comma, 1. He's going to call recur a, r of, uh, oh, he's not calling 0 and 1. He's going to be calling m plus 1. So it's going to be m is, is um, 0 plus 2 divided by 2 is zero, 0 plus 2 is 2 divided by 1 is going to be 1. So this is going to be 2 comma 2. He's going to call 2. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, that, that makes sense. So when something is... One second. So he's going to go call that one. He's going to call M. The first one is going to call I to M. I to M. And the second one is going to call M plus 1 to J. Yeah, so when M plus 1 to J, when this two, in this, when this recur recursively calls it, he's going to return um, AR of 2, which is 3. Now, a, this is going to return a r of 0, which is 3. This is going to return a r of 1, which is 3, uh, which is 2, which is 2. Now what we're going to do is see how many 3s. Um, so once we call the two recursive functions, we're going to see if both of these are the same. If they are, we can return that this guy can return that to the original parent and then the parent is going to decide what to do with this guy's answer and this guy's answer if they're both not the same we're going to count how many threes are in this entire array and how many twos are in this entire array and depending on which one is more he's going to return the the number which occurs more most to him 
Re so recur is gonna count how many threes there are, and he's gonna count how many twos there are. This recur is gonna count how many threes and how many twos there are, and he's gonna give whichever one is occurring more. That's what uh, two technically should be doing, but it hits the base case, and he's gonna return three. And then he's gonna notice that, hey, my first recur is giving me three back, and the second cur is giving me three back. So the answer we're looking for is gonna be three, which is the output. Now let's get into the code. Okay, uh, there we go, there we go. So int l is going to be recur a r z then zero i or i i i yeah and m and then int r is going to be recur m plus one and then j that's going to be there were two recursive stacks that each recur is going to call then we're going to see if l is the same thing as r we're going to return L. Else, what we're going to do is um, get a count of both of them. L count, I'm going to call it L count, is going to be equal to count of L. How many times L comes up in R given the boundaries i to j that come from the top. And then int R count is going to be count R, A R, i to j. And I'm gonna tell you what this count method looks like in a second, but pretty much this simple one. You know what, let's just write it here. Int count, what was that one? Uh, K is what we're looking for, integer ar array, let's call it AR, and int of i, int of j, these are the two boundaries. So int r, e, s is gonna be result for int g, uh, l, is equal to zero. Now this is a separate function that we're using just to count how many times a number occurs in this input. Uh, L is less than, oh, it's not E zero actually. It's gonna be I, L less than or equal to J, uh, L plus plus. If, if um, A R of L is equal to K, then we're gonna increment res and we're ultimately going to return res because that's all we want to know from this function. This function is going to be used here. When this guy is going to see, hey, how many times is L found in the function and how many times is R found in the function? If, L, okay, so that's pretty much it. We're at, almost done. We're going to return L count is greater than r count, then return l, else return r. Now what this final line means is that are there more numbers, are, are, is l occurring more times than r? If so, return l, else return r. And that's pretty much how you solve this one. There's a bunch of ways you can solve it with hash maps, priority queues, and um, just even brute force. But I wanted good practice and I wanted to make sure that I really understood this so I can explain it to you guys. Anyway, if you like this video, please subscribe, please share, and please like it and let me know what other problems you want to see in the comment section below. Thank you.